The K-1A1 is the second South Korean vehicle added to Armored Warfare and its first MBT. It is also the country's first domestically produced main battle tank and was originally armed with the M68 105mm rifled gun. Now equipped with the 120mm 44 caliber, it is entering into the second decade of its existence. Smaller and lighter than Western tanks, it is nonetheless as powerful with a diesel engine. In Armored Warfare, the K1A1 is now only obtainable with loot boxes, with an additional number of crates needed to upgrade the tank's lethality, aim time, engine, and survivability. It is also notably equipped with a target designate module, fast aim time, and automatic hydromatic suspension. With Asian tanks on the rise in AW, it is also serving as a premium first-hand ticket for what may be in the future. Thank you to Ginkazoom for voicing that. Thank you, Vox. That's great of you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, welcome to the K1A review. As said, this is the second Korean tank in the game, and the first, of course, the South, South Korean, the first South Korean MBT in the game as well. This is a very interesting vehicle. Um, you get this thing through uh, loot boxes. It is 100 loot boxes to get the tank itself. Then it is another 100 loot boxes to get various modules in the tank. As you can see, I was lucky I have three lying around. Um, so obviously you need 100 loot boxes to get an auto loader, 100 for a maintenance kit, 100 for a spore liner, 100 for a stage two kit scheme, and 100 for a target tra tracker scheme. Now what this means is that the K1A1 goes from being a stock tier 7 to being a improved one. Um, as you can see here, I didn't get the spore liner, but to be honest, a hit point increase of 400 isn't that much. So um, what you get in a tank is that you get a already a 15% armor bonus, which means that you will go from being um, about roughly a 50-50 pen by other tier 7s to a 30% on a lower plate. You also get an a repair speed of internal modules by 30%, you also get a reload speed of 22%, a target tracker, and you also get the ability to target designate for 30 seconds, which is incredible. You also get a stage 2 kit, which helps out the engine as well. This is a pretty decent tank, however, it does feel like it's a little bit on the slow side and relatively unagile as well. So to start off with, we have AP rounds of 700 pen, which is excellent and a pretty decent damage as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compare this to the other tanks in the same tier. So we're going to choose the 9910, the Charlie, K1, Leo, M1, this is going to be a long list, Jesus, the Sabra, TAE, and the Type 90. As you can see here, in fact, given the fact that it's a, I'll take the Sabra out because the Sabra only really has gun handling and penetration to go for it. So compared to everything else, the K1A1 has relatively decent damage. Um, it lags a little bit behind the 125 millimeters, but it's up there with the M1A1 and of course has vastly better damage than both the Type 90, the Challenger and the Leopard and it's slightly better than the Challenger as well. The Challenger, which I equipped with high explosive for god knows the reason why, give me a second. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, it has 20 less damage than the Challenger. It also has vastly better penetration than every vehicle here except for Leopard 2 with the Type 90 falling behind with the average penetration of most tier 7 MBTs being in the 650-640 mark. The DPM is also pretty decent as well, a little bit less than the 9910 which is the DPM oriented tank of its own tier, and roughly falling in line with the M1A1, 
the TNU with the Type 90 and the Leopard falling behind. It also has a good stack of hit points as well, 3000 is nothing to sneeze at even you know when there's tanks with heavier armor here. And the hull armor is actually composite so it is actually very good here. In fact it's almost as good as the Type 90s and the Challenger ones. Apart from that the turret armor is pretty good as well. The top speed is where it falls behind its contemporaries a little, 65km an hour and the 0 to 32 of 5.56 put in the same league as the Abrams but also better than the Challenger. However, it is also a very light tank being at 54 tons compared to, well, the Abrams and the Challenger, but it's roughly average in tier 7. In tier 8 this would be a completely different story and the camouflage is basically very middling. However, what it does have is excellent view range, 510 means that you will spot scouts quite a lot and as well as the fact you also have excellent gun depression as well. Apart from that, your maximum deviation is, generally speaking, pretty bad, but it's still within error, and your aim time is also very good as well. The turret traverse is pretty decent, I mean 49 is nothing to sneeze at, like this is, I mean 30 is pretty decent, so yeah. This is a very good tank. Um, when you get this tank stuck, you'll have something which has more like a 8 second reload and a lot of the um, statistics will also be a little bit off as well. So the first thing to talk about is the commander. So I've been taking Freya out for a spin for a while to help out with the fact that Freya is a relatively mobile commander. Um, and I found she to be pretty good, however she doesn't really provide much in the way of firepower. And there's also an interesting quandary as well, as you know that I like to sprout on Cortez as being good for MBTs, but here's the problem. Um, you have an extremely good chance of dealing max damage, and nobody's really talked to me about doing what to do with these yet, so if anyone has any suggestions for Cortez's commander skills, go for it. But um, the thing with Cortez is that he uh, gives you max damage all the time, but the K1A1 has the target designation ability and also the fact that it has a 30 second duration period. So do you need Cortez? Don't you? That's up to you. It, he's he's still a relatively good pick, and the fact that you'll always be rolling max, no matter what is good, I would not recommend taking Alicia. Um, so usually Alicia to help out with the tank's agility and everything, and you could always maybe take Gaia, um, since he's based on taking damage and also gives you some pretty good reload speed and everything else. However, the main part about the APS does not happen, so that's up to you. He's more of a Merkava commander. And you could always take Rachel, um, as she gives, of course, the bonus 5% reload increase per enemy within 50 meters, and of course, you get a 3% reload speed increase after destroying enemy modules. So, that's up to you, really. It's also giving you a pretty good amount of things here. Um, you also have a loader as well, so you could always take Philip if you really wanted to, and Philip is probably the safest bet here if you're on the, on the shelf about things. As you can see here, it gives a lot of lovely stuff. So for now, uh, crew-wise, um, best to take off-road driving and field repair. Pretty standard stuff here, aim speed, preventative maintenance, and for the loader, maybe, maybe go from rapid fire to instead having either secured ammunition or safety, as I will now explain. So, this is the armor model of the K1A1 versus itself. Lower plate is 700mm thick, beak is 700, can't penetrate the turret at all, there's a little bit there. Versus 700 uh, heat rounds, it's still the same. Gives you a 58% chance to pen there. Okay, that's that's a pretty middling, so it can penetrate itself, we bore that out. What about other tier 7s? What about, say, what does an Abrams do? Of course the Abrams only has a 30% chance there. Um, no heat rounds either, so how exactly do you take out a K1A1 in an Abrams? Well, uh, the thing is, is that an Abrams is significantly taller than a K1A1. So once you start getting close to these things, you can actually peg them through the beak, as this has the same weak, um, well, weakness that Leopard 2 does, in which the beak armor isn't as well armored as everything else. So once you get closer and closer and closer, you can go all the way through. But of course the usual thing to do with an Abrams is to simply track it and hope for the best. Um, however, there is something that's at, that I actually found out to be quite funny. Um, this thing has a weakness to hash. 
it's only 225 millimeters versus Hesh. This is actually worse than the Type 90, and it's a very big weak spot. And you will see this in the videos, in which I, in which if I came up against people using Hesh, they almost killed me. It's only 225 millimeters thick. So if you're in a vehicle with Hesh, this goes to I believe the. Does Leopard 2 have access to Hesh? It does. See, Leopard 2 AV, Hesh. LAV600 has hash, the Stingray has hash, the M1 Abrams has hash, the Chieftain has hash. This thing against specialized ammo in a way is actually quite weak and of course while a Merkava can't really go through the front, its missiles will. So that's also something to do as well and I don't believe this thing comes with an APS. So. This thing has very is is very strong against other MBTs, but remember, even if you're in the low tier, even if you're in a tier five versus this, even if you're in your M60A3, you can take these things on. For instance, a Leopard One using Hash will go for the lower plate. So that is of course something to do. So of course we also have a look at the vehicle's armor here. They're completely fucking useless. Don't even bother. Um, at least I don't have to go into the intricacies of World of Tanks. There's 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 few vehicles in Armored Warfare that actually has good side armor. Um, as usual, you can do relatively decent auto bounce angles, but that's the only really real point of side armor. Um, all the cannons will go through. That's about it, really. Um, basically, against an M1A1, 650 pen. Yeah, don't even bother. So. To wrap it up, this is a vehicle with a very good turret, however there are numerous weak spots, not to mention the fact it has a weakness to heat rounds, so AFEs of the same tier will go for your lower plate, high penetration heat rounds of, of, of the same tier such as the ones fired by the T80s and Chinese will go for the lower plate, heat, uh, hash rounds will go for your lower plate, so that means the vehicle needs to be placed in a very hold down scenario. So, this vehicle has a hydromatic suspension, but it's automatic. This means that you do not have the ability to toggle your hydromatic suspension. All that has to happen is... I just got a subscriber, that's nice. <laughs> oh god, that actually slightly shoot me for a second. But what this means is that you need to be hold down. So what, a so what an automatic suspension does is that when you point the gun down, the tank goes down. When you point it up, it goes up. Um, and also the fact it comes with a target designation abilities. So that's all you need to know about it. The following videos are pre-recorded videos from my live stream, so I hope they'll be of use to you. And I want you to know how I operate the K1A1 and the fact that maybe I could have done better if I'd have used those alerts. Stay and watch out, guys. Because uh, this is going to be fun. The lower plate might have been steel, so they might, so they may have just changed it to correspond with the upper plate. Don't know. Anyway, uh, as long as none of them use hash, we should be fine. It's true. Don't use hash, please don't hash me. But that does actually mean that the um, the challenger one is actually probably this thing's greatest nemesis. So let's hope he, so let's hope he doesn't know. Um, aside from this, fully maxed out, we've got a reload time of about 7.61 seconds. Um, it's roughly the same mobility as an Abrams. It's a little bit lighter, but roughly the same mobility. You won't go anywhere as fast as a TADU, of course, but you're not slow. And I think this is a diesel engine and not a gas turbine, so you're at least so you're at least fast off the mark. However, it still has that kind of NATO heavy tank feel to it. The sluggish feel. Not when you get up to speed, but maybe I've just been too used to playing AFEs and stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna follow that XM1 and I'm gonna come up all the way down there. And this is really steep for tanks. Um actually you And they got ammo right. Rip. That's why that's why you should no longer ever be packing an energy drink. The, um, well, I'm not. The 
T80 got lucky. It's not like he did much. I was on 700 hit points. I mean, there's those rare occasions when you get instantly ammo wrecked, but I haven't really seen that happen most of the time. I've only ever seen it happen when using the godly hash on the chap. Oh god, the tank's slowing down now. Ugh. Oh, it's pain. Anyway, at least we should be able to face these guys frontally on. I, I, I think that stupid object rushed too fast. Why would you do that? Anyway, at the very least, we should be able to use that gun depression now. And the XM1 fell off. Okay, let's see. Hi. Ooh. Oh, it looks like someone took a Vickers Mark 7. Okay, fire. Okay, um, obviously the the targets to kill here is actually probably going to be the Merkava, followed by the Challenger. And obviously, since I can't shoot the Challenger, the Merk right now, better focus on the other guys. Oh, oh, the gun depression is working a treat here. Jesus. Ow. Yeah, the challenger knows. He knows. Oh, looks like the Vickers can overmatch my side armor. The thing is, challenger, is that if you want to hash me, you got to keep at it. Yeah, this uh, gun depression is actually working because my lower plate is like 200mm is effective versus a challenger. Okay, he's down. Stingray's coming out. Let's see if we can find those other guys for now. Yeah, hi Stingray. Ooh. It'd be better if our other Stingray opened fire on this guy or something. Okay, and I bounced on him? What? It does seem to have some acceleration problems up here though. It looks like we're all gangbanging the Merkava now. Ooh. Yeah. It is a quiet tank. Quite okay, tank. Um, I think I found a bug. I just did minor damage to the third of a Vickers Marks by shooting it in the ammo bustle. No. I think I just about saved that challenger there from being ammo wrecked. <sighs> Well, we've lost. The rest of our team wasn't so fortunate. Oh well, you know what? 5,882 damage ain't bad. I will say though that the Type 90 is feels superior. Um, it has the hydromatic suspension. This thing has the target designation ability for some reason. Because they can. Anyway, we may as well sit here and be immune to the- Okay, so they're going for a no-cap kill-all scenario. That's fine by me. I can actually cover the rest of our team here. The, um, as you can see here, the gun depression is actually really helping. Right, Type 90 is going to be coming up soon. And then that means we should be able to fire on him. The moment he comes. Okay, there he is. Type you. Okay, TOU's down there. Not yet. There is a Magak though. And I bounced on Magak, okay then. And I lost. With a 2000 point difference. I'm actually running out of ammo now. This is unsatisfactory. Oh, through the upper plate of the 9910, that's beautiful. Okay, he's down. What about that Type 90? Okay, the Type 90 is moving as well. That means we should be able to get a side shot. No. No side shot today. No, it's. Down as well. Nope, bounce. 
Good. 700 times. Pretty sure that's a guaranteed kill there. Let's see what we can do to that type. Can we... Okay, that type has a really strong upper front plate. Like, Jesus. Let's see what we can do to this type over there. Okay, type's down. Ow. Gonna be, I'm, I'm actually gonna be down to heat rounds. I've got, I've got two, I've got two AP shots left. This thing is incredibly strong as a ridgeline sniper, by the way. Got type 80. Oh, 700 heat pan. It's not gonna be enough to go through these guys. Oh, they're, pro they're probably gonna kill me. Yeah, I think I think we found the one crippling weakness of this. It's only got 32 shells. Okay, let's see with the Type 91. Wait, what? Only has 32 shells. So that's why they're putting in the commander that has extra ammunition. Hi, Type 90. What do you mean you bounced? This is 700 millimeters a pen. Well, it bounced. Finally, it panned. Okay, the stingray's gonna kill me now. Rip. See if we can get killed. No. Well, that's 7,476 damage. I'll take it. Yeah, that's good. The only one problem with this match is that that fucking TADU was using Philip. Philip. <laughs> that's a problem or something? Philip is optimized for full cruise. So you're taking on um, Western main battle tank? Yeah. You take for the Palm Western main battle tanks. Okay, 8,072 damage done, 6,000, 600,000, 39,000 credits, and 17 battle coins. And on uh, Russian main battle tanks, who do you take? Um, generally speaking, you probably want. Okay, okay, let me have a look. So, actually, I'm gonna link uh, that review thing I was talking about. So this is the straw poll. So vote on it um, for the next tank I will review, um, and whatever tank comes on there will be the tank review that will come out either on Sat. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to do a review for Saturday because this stream is likely to end at either 11 my time or midnight. So yeah, um, so probably Sunday. Um, this game, to be honest, I'm not confident in using the K1A1 as a battle tank, um, simply because of the prevalence of um, high penetration missiles here, such as the ones on the Foxes, the BMP2, the VDOR, the BMPs. Um, the fact that a lot of their team has HEP, such as the Abrams, the Stingrays, the Chieftain 900, and of course the Magak and the Merc. So um, instead I'm going to try and use my hold down as much as I can, and I'm going to go for the um, hill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the high ground, Obi Wan. Hmm. Also, guys, as a reminder, um, this month's stream tip gold is based on me helping with my partial rent um, and um, money for um, basically giving voice actors a little bit of um, cash for uh, doing introductions to my reviews. So at the moment, I have three voice actors lined up. Um, one of which did the um, Alte review, which quite good, very neutral voice. Um, so I need to pay them about roughly ten bucks. Um, another one, ten bucks, and then so far that. So um, my list of voice actors for probably the next two reviews, two to three reviews, will be Ginka Soon, um, Dreamcatcher, and JC. And I believe that Fox just subsided. Congratulations, Fox. Okay. I have no idea what that stupid VBL is doing. I don't think he's smart, and I have no idea what these guys are doing. Um, for now, we're just going to push on on them, go for that Stingray. He has the highest burst damage. The rest of these guys are going to fall pretty quick, and I am regretting not taking heat mounts. Um, I have no idea why they decided to do something as so blatantly stupid as that, um, but obviously we need to punish them for their mistake. Uh, that Stingray should be using hair. Okay, let's just keep going. We just need to keep pushing these guys. Unless they've got snipers on the hill, I'm not worried. But for now, 
we are in a golden opportunity to punish an absolute fuck ton of their team's numbers. Okay, that Jacob's still there. Let's keep going for him. My lower plate is very, very exposed right now, and I am absolutely 100% paranoid that some of these guys going in for me. Um, but otherwise, I'm pretty sure these guys either have a death wish or they all decided to sulkably out their way to victory, which unfortunately is not going to happen today. And as you can see, that um, Bimp managed to damage me pretty well on that one. Um, but we've basically absolutely murder fucked a bunch of that team, and we need to go to go for the rest of them quite literally right now. So the fuck's going there? Hi, bye. Um, we need to keep going. We need to keep this momentum going. Um, there's a Stingray on my left, on my right. Um, but he's obviously pretty badly damaged at this point. Going in, going in, going into the city and being used as, as a battle tank may or may not be a good idea, but for now I just need to keep pushing along. Okay, there's a WZ over there. What well, are you going to be fine at? So oh. I mean, if you want to BMP, you, you can go for it, but I ain't following you there, dude. TAD down there. Shoot them. Just hope none of them loads. I have no idea if he is, um, or if Frizzy's gonna go for me or something, but that BMP2 has a death wish. Stingray, there we go, he blocked the Abram shot for me. Okay, let's keep going. Um, Abrams, okay, the Abrams is gonna try and go hold down on me. I don't think he's particularly smart as a person. Um, okay, he's using HEP, I am not enthusiastic now about this. Just gotta keep backing up. Just keep backing up. Um, he thinks he's smart. Um, so am I. I can I can pen your turret. This is not a fight you want to be in, Abrams. There we go. Just gotta get mindful of that T90 that's over there. Okay, no, the T90 is dead. We can go for the Abrams. And I was like, mine, 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 mine. I'm right for the turret. How many players was that? I, I, I don't know. There was um, a BMP2, a Stingray, a Fox that suicided, a BVP, and I think it was a BMP3 as well. And they just suicided for whatever reason. So I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why they do such a stupid thing, but oh well, maybe they just decided to farm battle coins. Don't I? You know what? The good thing about the K1A1 is that it's got really good pen, and in this kind of lineup, the fact that it has shit for hull armor doesn't matter. Because it actually... The thing about heavily armored tanks with low pen is that while they're great and very dominant in their own tier, um, such as... For instance, the um, the Abrams or something. They're well, the actually that's a really bad analogy. Um, something like the T series. They're really dominant in their own tiers, but they tend to fall off in plus two games simply because they don't have the penetration to really do anything. Whereas something like the K1A1 compared to the TDU would still be relatively decent in a tier nine game because the 700 pen like really really helps out with it. If that like if that like makes any sense at this point. Also I'm having some uh what do we call it? Uh it's not lag, it's latency issues. Ironically speaking, I'm pretty sure that my wireless connection is actually more stable than my wired. It makes no sense, I know, but it's like that anyway. And let's set up down here. Make sure they can't hit the hull armor because um, even in the hull down scenario, people still can hit that engine deck with heat rounds and stuff. Okay, Muck moving up. It's K1A1. Okay, I'm pretty sure we can move up now. They're not going to. We need to move up and go in. Because now they've been shot at, they're not going to move up. Unless they're stupid. And they're panda players. Panda's a pretty good team, actually. Who else is... 
Definitely something spotted me. Abraham Storm. Reload. Oh. Um, could someone do a quick search on the K1A1 line for me and tell me if it, if it's got a gas turbine or a diesel engine? Because this thing feels really slow to accelerate, despite its relatively high um, torque and powerful engine. It's like M1A1 still there. Something is. He's spotting me. This feels weird. I feel like they're seeing like the clippings of my tank, and of course I can't see theirs at all. Uh, let's see what we can do. There he is. Oh, bounced. And I think I should be able to hit him before he hits me this time. Good player. But obviously I have the pen to go through his uh God damn bounced on the Merc. What twelve hundred H power MTU diesel from Germany. Huh. That'd be pretty powerful on this, I'm wondering why it doesn't help. Got a leopard two A five coming back up to help them actually. I Think. For now, um, it's a pretty safe bet that you can usually punch through the Abrams' uh, turret front about roughly 50% of the time. Not all of the time, but around 50%, so it's not... Oh, and now these guys are fucking... Really? They start... Oh, that's what I don't like about these kind of players. Like, like, they push up and everything, and then they start running away the moment they get hit, they get hit by things. Just... Why... Anyway, this guy's getting dicked over by... Let's see if we can pen... I can't pen the Charlie. I should have fired when I had that green spot. That was a... My bad, actually. There's also a K1A1 over there as well. We need to... Back up. Okay, that Centaur is still down there-ish. Let's just hope that... Chally doesn't use Hesh on me, otherwise I'm going to be dead really, really quickly. Just wait for it. Another hit. Smoke up. Okay, he's using AP. Although at this point, it is very likely that I'm going to start getting swarmed. So I need to continue back in the fuck up. What are you doing there, Merkava? Shit, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Get into okay, we're in cover now. Need to aim straight at this Centauro. Take him out of the game. He's got a ready rack, which means he can really hurt. Okay, and I've got cover from this uh Merc, so I can go for the K1A1, which is good. Um while the challenger is like really is easier to kill, I need to go for this Merkava now. Which I can do. I just need to make sure he can't get my. Uh, another good pen there. Uh, we've got a Baz to go, but I'm pretty sure that once we get rid of this guy and the Challenger, we should be gold. There we go. Somebody distracted him for me. Please don't use Hash. Okay, no, he's he's still using AP. Someone needs to put like a public disclaimer. Please use Hash on. K1A ones and the like. There's a AMX RCR behind me. I have some heat rounds for him, but I think somebody else is going to go for him now. And I think their stingray might actually be AFK or something. Okay, so for now, I'm pretty sure I should be able to bully this uh, T90. No pan. Let's smoke up again and get closer. Um, I can go for his turret ring, and he may have issues with mine. I don't know, I've I've never really um Oh shit there he is. 
Nice turning that game around because your team was toast for some time. Thanks. Well, this is trapped. So let's keep him. This fucking stingray, really? God damn it. Might not be enough this time. Um, it's a stingray. LCR is over there. Yeah, I mean, all you need to do is just to make people uncertain and like hide behind some cover or something. Like, if that if that wreck wasn't there, I'd be dead. The Centauro would have fired on me. So so would the other guy. The T90 would have came up, and the Challenger would have probably been able to, you know, eventually shoot me. Yeah, 8,376 is really good. Um, the best part about that was that I stayed calm. I saw I had some cover behind me. And uh, let me flash up a quick bit of the K1A1 uh, armor and stuff, actually. So, yeah, I, okay, cool. I promoted the show. So many stats here that just feel kind of useless. So, may as well go for Hoarder again. Actually, now I think about it, that one would have been better because then we could do. Uh, anyway, um, this thing's armor profile. So, against, I'm gonna say, a Centauro 105. So, against its basic AP rounds, um, you can't pen this thing, but against HEP. You see why why I was so afraid of him? Um, if he shoots there, he can basically amarack me. And of course, when I go up to that T90, uh, where is it? There it is. So um, this thing can really bully the T90 pretty well. Uh, however, it is pretty vulnerable to the missiles. What about the FS. So, hilariously enough, using missiles against these things is actually pretty, pretty good. So it's got a. Um, the thing is, is that the T19 might not be able to go through with missiles, and, he, and even if he does, you've got to, of course, make sure it actually hits. So yeah, um, using that cover was good, and that's what turned the game around, to be honest. Anyway, that just about wraps up the K1A one, I guess. This is a very rare tank, given the fact that you need. God, how many loot boxes for it? I need one for the tank. One, two, three, four, five loot boxes. So it's about roughly 600 crates for a K1A1. However, stock, it's still relatively decent. Um, let me see if I can take everything. Okay, I can't take them off. Um, but overall speaking, if you do get the opportunity to have one of these, I would definitely recommend it. And if I do get the ability to maybe make some codes, um, for a K1A1, you know, maybe take mine off and exchange it. I will definitely do that as I feel like people could really use them. Um, so for now, um, as always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Next week is going to be the BMP3. Hopefully you're going to be able to get Dreamcatcher to voice that as um, she didn't voice the Time 90 one. I don't know why. Um, subscribe. We are currently on 735, I think. And of course, if you'd like to help sub, uh, support the stream, uh, there is a Streamlabs, well, stream link description down below to help donate, and that's always good. For now, I will give this 1k pop out of heavy metal, and I'll see you all next time. For now, take care everyone, I hope you enjoyed the review, and stay safe out there. Bye!